Hey everybody, welcome to this tips and tricks video. My name is Dave Hitteman. I'm the application specialist for the steel segment here at Trimble. And today uh, we're going to be starting a video series on using the organizer. Um, I say series only because I really can't cram everything into one short video. So we're going to cover a little bit at a time here. Uh, it seems like a lot of people have interest in you know using the organizer more. I get a lot of questions about the organizer. So this series will just serve as a great resource for uh, people to kind of reference back to to, to learn how this thing works. So um, the organizer is included with every license type of tech, everything from down to the project viewer for project managers, for erectors, or anybody else who doesn't actually need to build a model, all the way up through all the modeling and detailing configurations. So the, uh, the organizer here is located under the manage tab. When you go ahead and click the organizer, what it's going to do is prompt you to scan through the model and and find all of the different things that are currently in there and every time you open it up it's going to want to redo this and redo this synchronization which you can also do on the fly and I'll show you that later um, if you click on the synchronize button it's going to go ahead and do its magic uh, in this case going ahead and loading its objects you can see on the right that I have already opened this once before, so I do have assemblies and parts and bulk groups and welds already loaded. Now, what you see on the right in the categories is dependent on your current role. I started this model and detailed this model with a steel detailing role, so I have uh, groups that we have defined here in the U.S., um, that kind of makes sense for a steel detailer. The overall assembly, secondary parts, bolts, welds, and components. Different roles like the concrete roles are going to have their own groups. If you're not using the U.S. Imperial environment, other countries may have their own categories set up over there. So um, this is just what you're going to see with the U.S. Imperial steel detailing role. So as you can see, it's it's done going ahead and doing its synchronizing. And um, because of these categories, we've got steel assemblies, secondary parts, etc. Um, all that's doing is finding all the steel assemblies and then in this case, grouping them based on name. So 659 beams, 106 columns, and so on and so forth. Um, you can see right away there's a little icon for the different um, categories. The Square, the single dot, is indicating that that is grabbing part information. Um, it's grabbing just angles, just the beam alone. No shear tabs, no clips, no nothing. Uh, plates and things like that. When you see the four dots, that's grabbing at the highest hierarchy level. It's grabbing it as an assembly. So this beam information is going to be the overall uh, weldment, maybe one term that people use. Uh, so it's a completed fully connected welded assembly okay so right away you can tell when one is built for one or the other now if you click on one of these groups like let's say I click on beam the way the current out-of-the-box object browser side of the organizer is set up is that it's going to list out all of the uh, information for that beam now each category that we see over here on the left has a particular report associated with it. In this case it's using the assembly list report. Um, there are several reports that we give you out of the box, again dependent on your environment and your role, and these are customizable as well but I will show you that in a later video. So the default reports as you can see are going to list out things like my mark, prelim mark if I have one, my profile material grade. Um, the reports that you see here, the object browser side of things are an instant feedback um, type of report. So I can click on column and it's going to go ahead and switch up to provide me with column information. Now the organizer does not just work off of categories over here on the right. It can also work based off of model selection. Right now this letter A here stands for automatic. It's basically saying I'm going to automatically show you a report based on either highlighted objects in the model or the category. So it's kind of trying to smart select based on what you're doing. Um, if you turn that off, you can set it to only be objects in the model or only categories. So just as an example, if I disable the automatic and I say only show me objects that are selected in the model, let me go ahead and turn off the categories there. As I click on the different categories, you can see that nothing happens because I have to come over here, highlight objects in the model, uh, notice that I grabbed them at a part level, so I'm not, you know, this is built for assembly. This is an assembly list, so it's not really uh, giving me much information right now. Let me change up my selection here to select assemblies, 
and do this again. That's actually a great little kind of heads up as to what might happen if you don't have your selection icon set properly. So now I'm grabbing it based on model only, not category. So regardless of what I have selected over here, it's only going to give me stuff that's highlighted currently in the model. So just kind of a real quick, like that's how you can kind of work with the different groups over here, the categories, or versus selected parts in the model. Again, if I go to categories only, let me turn off the selected objects in the model. Uh, now it's only going to show me columns or only going to show me beams. And then what I have in the model doesn't really affect anything. Um, with the automatic, it's kind of going to do a blend of both. Um, so to be honest, it's, it's pretty robust. I usually leave that on automatic. Um, now, there are some cool things you can do with this information. Once you have a, a list of beams, we can start to do things like grouping, um, either through manual options or through combining just everything that's identical. Um, to, to show you the grouping real quick, this is really powerful um, even very early on. So uh, people are using this grouping for different things. If I'm an estimator, I may want to group things based on their size or shape. If I'm a detailer, I may want to group things based on their material grade. Um, that's actually pretty powerful because it acts as a checking tool. And we do cover that in our training as well as a checking tool. When you have different people modeling and they're moving very quickly, you may model in a beam and forget to change the material grade to the correct grade. And you accidentally model in an 8x10 that's A36 or something goofy like that. Um, you can actually, once you turn on the group, you can grab any one of these column headers and drag and drop it up to the grouping field. So if I drag material up and let go, we can see that right now of my beams, all 659 are A992. However, if I hold control and I grab, say, uh, the vertical HSS brace as well, I can see now that I have 659 A992 objects and 85 A1085 objects, which is the newer HSS steel spec. So by using this simple, you know, grouping of material, well, now I can make sure that everything is correct. Everything is on the up and up. If you see something that shows up as an A36 line and you only have beams and columns selected, right away, that's a trigger to me that, hey, you know, something's not quite right with this part. Let's investigate it further. So with that kind of uh, that theory in mind of investigating further, what if there was one of these beams that I wanted to investigate further? I can right click on this and select it in the model, which will actually go ahead and highlight that member so that I can find it and fix whatever happens to be wrong with it. So there is this nice two way street of interaction between the organizer, not just the categories, but the object browser and the physical model. Um, this is uh, pretty adjustable on the fly, so if you want to go ahead and drag up instead of material, you want to drag up something like profile to that field, well now it's grouping everything based on the profile along with its quantities, the overall length, the overall weights, and also here is top of uh, steel elevation, um, which I'd, I would probably turn off the summing, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, um, but you know, right now it's actually taking all the elevations and trying to add them up together. Um, so, you know, that's kind of the, the basics of the organizer and interacting with the organizer. Some other quick things about this is uh, we can export whatever we want to an Excel spreadsheet. It is possible to set up a template file. So in this case, I'm pointing to one that I've modified slightly. But if you have an Excel template with a header with like your company logo or something like that, what Tecla will basically do is pick the first empty row and that's where it will start to export this information. Um, when you're exporting your uh, current object browser, you can export things like only the summary rows. You can export without the column headers. Um, that's obviously personal preference and kind of depending on your needs. Uh, but in short, if I go ahead and hit export here, it's going to take this information, organize the way we see it, uh, and it's going to put it on that Excel template that I have uh, on my desktop. I have it in a firm folder. Uh, this could be in a model folder or something like that. But um, there we go. There's there's now that information exported to Excel. So the organizer is just a great way to get that information very quickly into Excel, which is obviously very popular for, for different purposes. 
Um, if you want to try mixing up some of the different reports that are being used, you, you don't have to use the one that's by default with the category. So if I select steel assemblies here, I could try to cho choose something like a part list and see, you know, how it works. Um, I, you could theoretically try the bolt group check. It probably wouldn't make a whole lot of sense selecting steel assemblies, but you could. Now, something like, again, I will get into in another video on modifying these reports. You can click on the settings button here, and this is going to open up um, where you can modify those default reports and also create new ones. So we will get into that uh, in a future video. Also in the future, I'm going to show you how to create your own categories. Um, this was just a simple introduction. These are based off of the same type of filters that you see with normal selection filters down here. They're just uh, saved with a slightly different option. We're also going to talk in a future video about how to set up your project coordinates. Right now, there's 1,369 uh, assemblies or objects in the overall project. We're going to show you how to set up these sites. Like I said, it's kind of tough to fit it all in one video. Um, so keep an eye out um, as we start putting these out. Uh, I'm going to try to kind of cover all of the different tools that are available in the organizer. I hope this at least helps as a basic intro. Um, so if you have any questions, you know, as always, reach out to your local help desk if you want to put some comments down to down below. Um, I'll answer where I can. Um, if there's anything specific about the organizer you guys are interested in, you can also comment on that, and I'll see what I can do about covering it. As always, thanks for watching.